Second, I want to turn the camera. I am recording this in OBS um, to maybe put this up online after this, which, which I think I hope you don't mind. Um, there we go. Thank you, thank you very much. Now, um, Kat, I hope there are snacks at the end of this so I can have them too. Now we're going to move a little bit further, a couple of, a couple of centuries. One of my other favorite composers, that is, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to project now, because I realize that my microphone is set up to record me when I'm singing, and so if I speak without projecting, you will not pick me up. This next composer is one of my other favorites, Stefano Donaudi. He is often overlooked because, again, many of his arias are given to beginner students. But I think he has an absolutely beautiful uh, thank you, Pod. A beautiful way of writing melody. Such heartfelt passion to it, too. He wrote one opera, La Fiamanga, the, the Flemish Girl, which unfortunately was unsuccessful. Uh, I have actually tried to find a manuscript of La Fiamanga to perform, but it's very elusive. Maybe someday we'll put it on Second Life, who knows, because it has not been performed in about 200 years. So. Without further ado, I would like to present two selections of his back to back. Amorosi miei giorni, uh, um, am, my amorous days, and O del mio amato ben. Amorosi miei giorni, mio, miei giorni, sorry, suddenly slipped into American there for a second, is um, a paean to newfound love and how if this singer could find the love that he wants, he would never fear. Um, jealousy nor deceit. Uh, I sang this for my best, one of my best friend's wedding uh, back in February, and uh, I think you will like it as much as I do. Ah, oops, microphone, don't tilt. second. I'm sorry, I tugged on the microphone and it went out, out, out of shape. So, okay. Live theater, everyone. <laughs> Mai più scordare che di tutti i 
And now, continuing with our Donaudi selections. Um, thank you, Proudly, Viva Sethos, and Carrie Ann Snow. Thank you very much. The next Donaudi selection is uh, more melancholy in its setting. Um, it is about someone who has lost his beloved, and he searches for her in an empty house, calling out his na uh, her name. And he says, and it causes his heart to bleed, but from those tears, its love seems to nourish itself. And even if he for one moment would consider finding someone else, his heart immediately says, but without her, what will I do? Amaro o del mio amato ben. Oh, 
sogno il cuore di speranze ma cerco in van ci amo in van per piangere me Donaudis O del Mio Amato Ben. And now we're going to move to another composer, one who was at his time the most famous song composer in Italy, but he didn't start this way. Um, Paolo Tosti was nowadays is known for his supremely beautiful melodies uh, and an enormous repertoire of song. But when he was a beginning musician, he submitted song after song after song for publishing to Ricordi, which was the leading and is still is one of the leading um, musical, classical music publishers of the day. And all of them were rejected. Um, let me drink a little water. At that time, Paolo Tosti was so impoverished that he was subsisting exclusively on oranges and stale bread. But his fortunes changed one day when he met a pianist who loved his music so much that he arranged a little concert at which the future Queen of Spain was attending. And she was so impressed by his music that she immediately made him her private singing teacher. And he then became a celebrity. His music was played everywhere. And then he went to England, where he received similar acclaim, and he was knighted. Uh, he returned to Italy to live, on the, to live out the last decades of his life, establishing the uh, legacy of one of the greatest song composers in the, Itali in the Italian language. And so uh, this is the first time I'm going to sing this ever. Um, Ideale, a love song by Paolo Tosti. Oh, 
We're going to leave Italy behind and we're going to go on to Germany, one of the countries that has the, um, one of the most historied um, traditions of songwriting. Uh, of course, we're talking about the Lied, which is the, uh, what is the proper denomination for the German art song. Uh, of course, in Germany has enormous profusion of famous poets from Goethe onwards. Um, but we're going to start with what could be considered maybe a little bit of the beginning of the lead tradition. We have a song by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Abendempfindung an Laura, which is Evening Feelings for Laura, in which the speaker of the poem is reflecting upon her death and she urges her friends to not shy away from crying at her grave because it will be, she says, the most beautiful pearls on her diadem. Lebenswunsch, Sinne, 
Und der Vorhang rollt herab. Findung and Laura, one of my favorite uh, songs by Mozart. And now we're going to go on to the King of Lieder, Franz Schubert. Schubert, of course, wrote many, many important song cycles. A song cycle is essentially, um, I guess I should have explained what, what art song is, better late than never, for those who are not aware of uh, the obscure terminology that classical music can sometimes employ. Let me drink a little bit and I'll talk about that. So art song, lieder, chanson, and canzona are just some words that um, in classical nomenclature are used to denominate a song that is not part of a theatrical or um, sacred work. Um, if it's part of, a, of an opera, then a solo song becomes an aria. 
Likewise, also if it's part of an oratorio, which is a sacred work not staged, but which has lit uh, liturgical text. Uh, an art song, Lida, etc., is just music, usually poetry from another poet, although some poets, um, such as um, uh, Richard Huntley, Lee Hoiby, and Hub Miller, also set their own poetry to work, uh, to music. And sometimes composers like a poet so much that they decide to set a whole bunch of their poetry to music, often sometimes from the same collection. And so they call those song cycles, and they're sung usually back to back, although selections, like in this case, are also employed in recitals. This is Wohin uh, by the poetess Müller, and this is from the Schöne Müllerin, the beautiful Miller maid. And um, this, this shows Schubert at some of his most uh, illustrative um, heights because the, um, he does something that we call tone painting. Uh, tone painting is when the music, the accompaniment, or the vocals are using certain melodical figures to give an impression of what the song is about or the setting of the song. In this case, Schubert uses the right hand of the piano to convey the sound of a rushing brook uh, because the speaker of the poem is interrogating the brook, asking him, where shall I go? I hear your rustling waters. Tell me, where shall I go? And the, uh, the constant flow of the stream is illustrated in the right hand, which is extremely hard to play. Um, and I always take my hat off to accompanists who are able to tackle this beast. Uh, so without further ado, Wohin from the Schöne Müllerin. Ich hört ein Lächeln rauschen voll aus den Felsen quell. In zum Talle rauschen so frisch und von der Hill. Ich weiß nicht, wie mir würde nicht reden, was mir trat. Ich muss auch hinunter mit meinem Wanderstab. Ich muss auch hinunter mit meinem Wanderstab. Hinunter und immer weiter und immer dem Bach nach. Und immer heller rauschte und immer heller der Bach. Und immer heller rauschte und immer heller der Bach. Ist das denn meine Straße, wo Wöchlein spricht, wohin, wohin spricht, wohin? Du hast mit deinem Rauschen ihr ganz berauschten Sinn. Du hast mit deinem Rauschen ihr ganz berauschten Sinn. Was sag ich denn von Rauschen? Das kann kein Rauschen sein. Es sind denn wohl die Nixen tief unter ihren Rhein. Es sind denn wohl die Nixen tief unter ihren Rhein. Na sind denn Gesell aus Rauschen und wandre völlig nah. Es ging ja müde Wörter in jedem klärenden Bach. Es ging ja müde Wörter in jedem klärenden Bach. Na sind denn Gesell aus Rauschen und wandre völlig nach, völlig nach, völlig nach. So that was Wohin from the Schöne Müllerin. And now um, we're going to talk about, oh, thank you, AJ. Um, thank you, Alice, fellow Wonderlandian. Now um, we're going to move on to another one of Schubert's famous song cycles. Um, this one is from his Schwanegesang. Um, he has, um, he has the, the Schöne, his most famous, his most famous um, song cycles are the Schöne Müllerin, the beautiful Miller maid. We have uh, Schwanegesang, which is the swan song, and then we have uh, Winterreise, which is uh, the winter's journey. This selection, which is probably one of his most famous songs, a uh, stension, a serenade, 
comes from his swan song, the Schwanegesang. And let me cue up the piano. Moving swiftly along, we are now going to jump to France. I am skipping, I'm going to skip Schumann, unfortunately, because we're running a little bit long. Uh, <laughs> and I need to catch up. Thank you, Holly. We're going to go now to France, where Mr. Gabriel Fauré is one of the reigning composers of his day. Fauré is an interesting composer because he sort of became the link between Romanticism and Modernism. When he was alive, when he, when he was young, uh, Frédéric Chopin was still composing. And by the time he died, jazz and, um, and the schools of atonal music had already begun um, their early reign. So he kind of straddles, kind of like Beethoven, uh, straddled the classical and Romanticist period. Uh, uh, Gabriel Fauré straddled Modernism and Romanticism. 
And you can see that a lot in his compositions. And this is a Poème d'un jour, uh, poésie, uh, sorry, poetry, <laughs> poetry by uh, Charles, Charles Gramoujean. And this is a, a lovely song about the impermanence of things and how all, be how all beautiful loves are short. He was a little bit biased, but here we go. Adieu. Now, moving right along, I want to take us to La Belle Époque. Uh, we have one of my, ah yes, I keep saying this, but uh, to be fair, I did stuff today's program with a whole bunch of my favorites. Uh, this is one of my favorite French composers, although he's not completely French, he was born in Venezuela. His name is Reynald Dohan, and he became the reigning king of the art song in La Belle, during La Belle Époque. And you'll see why, I think his songs are just little gems. Uh, just self-contained little sparkling things that don't really lack anything and they're just perfect. They're like little Emily Dickinson poems because Emily Dickinson was one of the most perfect poets out there, perfectly self-contained introspective miniatures and so I guess I would call Reynaldo Han the Emily Dickinson of the art song. All right, here is one of my favorite songs by him, A Cloris. Tu 
And now um, we're going to go for another poem. This one is by the immortal Victor Hugo. And um, the second song by Reinaldo Hahn, Si mes vers avaient des ailes, if my, if my verses had wings. Um, mes vers fuiraient doux et frêles vers votre jardin si beau. Si mes vers avaient des ailes comme l'oiseau. Make sure I've got the right volume setting. Some of these tracks, unfortunately, one day we'll normalize all of them, but some of them are quieter than others, so I want to make sure I've got the right volume setting. All right. I tell you he writes these beautiful little miniatures I thought that was one one of my favorite ones um, <laughs> yes Taka sure does have wings make sure you're not obstructing people's view with your wings <laughs> so now we're going to go my last two pieces of this afternoon thank you so much for uh, to Sethos for having me here here at Nimbrasil thank you to all of you for coming I have an art song, and then I have an operatic aria, um, because I'm going to sing a, a piece by Jules Massenet, who was one of the preeminent operatic composers of his generation, 
and also a prolific art song writer. So he kind of straddled both ends, kind of like Mozart. That is not always the case. I don't believe Schubert ever wrote a complete opera, as far as I remember. So now we're going to go for La Elegie, Au du printemps d'autrefois. Um, it is the poet lamenting the passing of spring and mourning the loss of love. This is a, a theme that he will revisit in his opera Werther uh, when, he re when he sings Pourquoi me réveiller. Uh, but now let's go sing the Elegie. Massena is very extra. And actually, I'm going to demonstrate that now uh, because, oh, uh, thank you, Elise, with the final selection for today from his opera Werther, the, um, the, the tormented poet reads a poem which reads, Pourquoi me réveiller au souffle du printemps? Why have you awakened me, O oh, breeze of spring? For all I see is the ruination of my love. And those who come after me shall seek my glory. They will search for it, but they only will find ruination. Why have you wakened me, O oh, spring breeze? Oh, 
Pourquoi me réveiller from the opera Werther by Jules Massenet. Thank you so much for coming here today. And now I'll be sticking around for any questions um, and to meet and greet everyone. Thank you again, Sethos, for having me here. And uh, I'll, now I'm going to go ahead and mute my microphone. Then I'll turn off the stream and I'll get up and greet you all. Hopefully. <laughs>